Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Bacterio Space Exploration. And I have news. Yes, I finally started doing Arcosphere processing. And um, yeah, it's a little bit complicated. Although I have gone for what I think is probably the simplest possible way of doing it. So, let's have a bit of a talk about Arcospheres. When you get them from your um, spaceship, they'll come along and you'll get them in this grey form here that you can see in these in these um, in, in here. And those are sort of they are blank arcospheres, and there are two recipes you can run through in order to, to turn those into useful arcospheres. And when you program one of these machines to do one of those recipes, as you can see, this, this one is currently producing lambda, zeta, epsilon, and gamma. But every so often, sometimes after running, there is a chance that it will flip to doing the other one that produces psi, theta, phi, and omega. So you can't rely on what you're going to be getting out of these machines. It could be, some, sometimes it'll be one set of four, sometimes it'll be the other set of four. I put in two machines so that I can do both, so that I, I can, and in theory, have these set to do different ones. That one's on Lambda, that one's also on Lambda, so at the moment they're not actually doing different ones, but never mind, it doesn't actually matter. The idea is that these will then turn the grey arcospheres into the colourful arcospheres, which then all go up into this warehouse up here. And what I've what I've designed, what I've decided is a good way to deal with this, and it may or may not be a good way, but it is certainly a way, and it seems to be mostly working, is we're then trying to keep... So, I've got slightly ahead of myself there. The challenge with Arcospheres is to keep them balanced. So most most, most of the time in Factorio, you have, you pull in some inputs, like up here we pull in all of these things, and it spits out the, the things we're looking for, and granted, okay, sometimes this one produces ad byproducts as well, but all of the Arcosphere based recipes will spit out as many Arcospheres as they take in but they'll probably be a different type in fact, they'll definitely, for these ones, they'll definitely be a different type, it takes in a Zeta and an Omega and then will either spit out two Lambdas or two Phi's, so you're always going to get a bit, of, a bit of a sort of a stir and a churn of different ones going in and coming out now, in an ideal world all of these would be perfectly balanced, and these four machines, when they're all running together, would take in all of the same, would, would take in a selection of all of the different ones, and produce a selection of all the different ones, and everything would stay perfectly balanced. We don't live in an ideal world. The chances of this actually happening is minimal at best. So there's another set of recipes as well, and that's what all of these machines around here are doing. They take in two arcospheres, in this case a lambda and a theta, and they produce an epsilon and a zeta. So you, you've got this stirring that he calls folding, I'm going to call it giving it a big stir and just changing around what's in there. And the idea here is that it will take in, it will keep an eye on this on this chest here and essentially just keep stirring and stirring to try and keep as, mu as many different types as possible available. So at the moment, as you can see, we've got lots of, we've got phi's and lambdas available. So there's probably one of these recipes, this one here, is turning those phi's and lambdas into omegas and, uh, and psi's. And then there's going to be other ones. And so between them, the idea is, that, and they're all they're all set to monitor the the the, the chest to see if their outputs are, or if there's any of their output in there. So here we're saying if there's no if there's no omegas and there's no zys, then we output two ticks. And over here we say if there's two if there's more than one tick. So if, if either of those if there's none of either of the outputs, then this machine should run. So we pull the input out of the chest into the into the arcosphere and it runs. Now, this is a quite a simplistic and straightforward method of balancing them. It's quite likely that I could do something deeper and cleverer and, frankly, better by going in and doing something more, much more complicated with uh, with with the insert with with the combinators. Perhaps looking at the inputs to see if there's a certain number of the inputs available, or trying to make sure we don't insert more than one into here, because the big problem with Arcospheres is that they're really hard to obtain. I've got about 80 of them at the moment in total um, across all of the different types and getting more of them is difficult. So so let's move back to collecting Arcospheres and I talked about this a bit in the previous episode but I think it's something that's worth talking about a bit more. So I have this spaceship here, this is my personal travel long range travel vehicle it's, it's the one with all of the ion engines on the back so it can get to most parts of the um, solar system, most parts of the galaxy reasonably quickly and by reasonably quickly i mean in about 10 minutes or so it's still quite a slow process but then this has over here we have some chests in here we have um a, a probe rocket launch silo lots of lots of deep lots of arcosphere collectors and over here we have lots of probe rockets and the idea of this is that the uh, this this ship can then fly out to 
distant places and start launching out Arcosphere collectors. So what we've what I've done so far is I've flown out to Realm of Shadows. Uh, well, first I went to Caltrop, Sky Fragments, and Razorfield, I believe. Then then I did another mission out to Realm of Shadows, Dead Space, and Ephemeral Expanse. And in each of these places, I launched about five probe rockets with Arcosphere collectors in them. And if we have a look in here, we can see that. Um, I've, I've, I don't, yeah, I did five launches from each of these, and I did set except Sky Fragments where I did seven. Um, and I discovered from doing this that the first five launches from each each place seem to be more or less guaranteed to find an Arcosphere. So you can see I've got five from each of these. But then the sixth one tended not to. So you see I did seven here, and the seventh one did, but the sixth one didn't. So there's a diminishing returns in each of these. As the more the more probes you launch, the lower the probability of getting an Arcosphere back is. Now I don't know for sure whether it's on a, a fixed pattern so the first five are guaranteed to get one, the sixth one is guaranteed to not, the seventh one is guaranteed that it will and so on or whether it's whether there's a probabilities in there. However it feels like the magic number is to go out and launch five collectors from each of these each of these places to get these Arcospheres. Now the other thing is that all, all of these places count as deep space because they're not around a, around a sun. So not only do you get the Arcospheres for launching from those those specific places, you also get Arcospheres found in the deep interstellar void. And this is a separate counter that diminishes as well. So the first one I launched, I think I think the rocket brought back, I think it was five uh, Arcospheres in total. So it got four from being near Caltrops, and then it's no, it got one from being near Caltrops. And it got an extra four for being in the deep interstellar void. But as you can see, this is not four times this number. So the, that number has been diminishing fairly quickly. However, there's nothing I can do about that. Because the, this, this number is going to diminish wherever I launch from. So I can think of these just simply as a bonus. I get So, so it's worth trying to maximise the number I get from launching it in, from different asteroid, deep space asteroid fields. And just go, well, good, I'm going to get some interstellar void ones as well. But that number is going to go down and down over time. So what I do, what I do, is I fly the ship out. I'll go around a handful of um, a handful of nearby um, deep space asteroid fields until I start to run low on fuel. Then I fly back to Kalidus, refuel, go out and do it all again. Um, so that's why I've done little groups that are close together. So I've done those three. I've done those three. Next, I'll probably come out and do these four because they're all quite close together. And then those three, and so on. And by then, I'll, I'll have a decent number of um, Arcospheres by then, and probably enough. So this 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 is why I don't have. This is why I haven't just chucked 300 Arcospheres in there and gone. That's or 10,000 Arcospheres in there and gone. Let's go. Let's just go nuts and have a big supply of all of them. Put them on belts. All that sort of thing. I've, ha I've managed through all of this. I've managed to collect a total of about 80 Arcospheres, maybe slightly, slightly fewer than 80. I can't remember exactly. And so those have all gone into this system. And getting more is difficult, and getting more on in large quantities is very difficult. And so that's why I'm using um, using robots around here because I don't want to, I don't want to have lots of them sitting on belts, just sort of wasting space. Which is why I've got them being brought out to the um, to the supply it out, out to where they're needed by bots and then being loaded in loaded, and then they're, they're coming back on a belt but that belt's reasonably quick so it's not too much of a problem and as you can see each of these recipes produces the arc the, the it folds it refolds the arcs but it also produces a type of science data those are then pulled out by these splitters along here and then we can give them all a, a nice mix down here send them down here into the um into the queue down here where they will then be turned into into science um, now it's notable that these ones seem to have significantly fewer than these ones, and I think that's down just down to what type of arcospheres are available. Um, this is, well, yeah, there's no easy way to tell which is which at a quick glance. But um, you'll notice that these, whilst these two chests up here, well, they did until that one it pulled. These two have got had both of the both of the input arcospheres that are required. Actually, down here they've got both of them as well. So the system seems to be mostly working. These machines are running basically constantly. So I'm not sure why these are different, but never mind. So these are then producing the um, the required uh, science packs, uh, sorry, the, the catalogs from the data cards, which are then being fed off as usual, as, as is done everywhere else, over to a station here, where they can then be taken away by, uh, by a train to go off and be re-scienced. Um, this does, of course, use um, 
an aquium because everything uses an aquium in deep space science because it's difficult to get and difficult to get hold of so that adds to the challenge and i'm probably going to have to seriously boost my aquium production at some point so that's a on the on the to-do list it also uses significant data that's these gold memory cards that are coming through here and that was i'm not going to say annoying it was an extra thing i had to do because i didn't have because Memory cards are one of those things that comes from further down the science chain and therefore can't just be brought in easily but on, on one of these belts. So what I had to do is, is come over here to the general science area and then filter off from this belt here, pull out the um, the significant data cards put and put them into a station here so they can be picked up. And that's not, it's not difficult. It's, it's something I've done many times before for many different resources. But it was the first time I've had to pull something out from here. So it was a, bit, a little bit weird and a little bit different. While I was doing that, I also came in over here and I upgraded these computers and set them to be doing the um, the recipe for making significant data that uses all four types of insight. And that is slightly more efficient. So if we look in FNEI, we can see that we can look up the significant data. And there are lots of there are lots of different recipes for making this. You start off at the very beginning with ones that use 36 of one type of insight, and that only and that produces four significant data. And you've got this recipe for all four types. You then move on to one that takes in two types, again a total of 36, but produces six. So you're getting 50% more output for your input. And again, we've got all the combinations of that as well. So there's oops, lots of these recipes. Then we get on to the ones that take in three. And again, it's a total of 36. But this time it's producing eight significant data on the output. So again, it's, it's an improvement. It's a 33% a, a improvement over the previous one. Or it's producing twice what the initial the initial one was. And then, uh, you've guessed it, we then have one which takes in 36 across all four types of insight and produces 10. So at this point, you're producing two and a half times as much as, you, as we were from the original recipe from the same quantity of inputs it just requires a larger variety of them and that makes it slightly more complicated but more significantly whereas the first three types of up to going up to th using three types of input can be done in a tier one supercomputer this required me to upgrade it to a tier two supercomputer which isn't too difficult it's yeah I'm, I'm making these already they're not they're not too much of a challenge I've, I've got plenty of them so I was able to come over here and upgrade them and that means it runs a bit faster as well so I'm producing them at a faster rate than I would have been if I actually, I take that back actually we the um, this recipe now takes 120 seconds to produce 10 so it's one every 12 seconds before it was 120 seconds to produce oh no so it's slightly faster actually because I've upgraded the computers so yeah we're producing them slightly quicker than we were before and whatever rate we're producing them at it's fast enough as you can tell because this belt is completely backed up so yeah there's lots and lots of inputs required but the arcospheres are the complicated part of that. Now you'll notice now all of these machines have stopped churning, which means in here we've actually got a few of all eight of the um, different types of arcospheres, and so this system is now happy. It's done enough stirring that everything is now settled down a bit. Now we'll probably find that as as the arcospheres get taken away by the bots, eventually you'll you'll find that one of these will probably have insufficient, and the whole machine will start up and it'll start churning again, and it's. It's not, yeah. There we go. Like just like that, and uh, and yeah, they all sort of they all sort of kick in as all of the other ones start to get used up, except that one, interestingly. Um, and it's a fairly naive and simple system in that it just goes, well, I've got some arcospheres. Let's give them a big old stir, change them into other arcospheres, and we'll keep doing that until everything is happy. Now there is a chance that the whole system could break down if we get to the point where, for some reason, every single arcosphere in here is a lambda. And then the system will break and it will stop and it, we won't be able to get it started again without going out and getting some more arcospheres. But so far that hasn't happened. It does seem to be working. And basically I think the secret of this system is just to put in more and more arcospheres until it works smoothly. And I think we are probably at the point where it's working pretty smoothly because all of these are running happily. They've produced about 200 and something um, outputs each. Now granted these two are 28 and 40 ahead of these two but it's it's basically working um, so I think we're probably okay I do want to get more arcospheres to chuck in here for, for a couple of reasons one is because the more I've got in here the less likely it is to deadlock and the more smoothly the whole system will run but the other reason is because there's other stuff that requires arcospheres so if we had to take a look at one of these uh, there's yes okay there's all the recipes for, for giving them a good old stir for producing them and there's the date. This is the data I'm producing. 
um, but also you need arcospheres for making Naquium processors, for example. So this takes in lots of different types of arcospheres and spits out mostly lambdas and a psi as well, and and an Aquium processor. So there's going to be a lot of stirring required here to get these back to, to, to turn all these lambdas back into the random thing, to, a random selection of all of them. But we're going to need to do this in order to get Aquium processors in order to keep the system in order to because we're going to need these for future things. We're also um, oh sometimes it produces lots of size as well. So you see this is the way this this is the way this sort of thing works. If we look at let's look at phi's as well. See if there's stuff stuff to produce with those. Okay, there's another Aquium processor recipe. That's interesting. Oh no no there isn't no there isn't it's just because it uses all of them. basically all of them do no, one oh it uses lots of different ones on the input so what I'm going to have to do at some point is have another system up, set up around here nearby somewhere in range of this robot port basically that will do the um, that will do make those Naquin processors and then somehow spaghetti all of the other stuff in around it to get that working so Arcospheres are a big complicated system as you can see. Um, I think I've managed to get it working through a relatively simplistic um, system. This may not be the most efficient, these machines may be working harder than they need to, but I honestly don't think that matters because all they're using is, is electricity and electricity is free because we have solar power to generate it. We have loads of it available. Generally things just seem to be okay, so I'm not too worried about it. I may put in, I may come along and put in a beacon at some point. Uh, can I cover them all with a single beacon? Yes I can, if I put it over here somewhere. Um, <clears throat> then we can get all of these beacons, make them run even faster, and hopefully that will bring it down, bring it to a point where everything is just kept balanced slightly more neatly, nicely, generally, and generally, and generally working, and generally working well. But we'll see if that's required. At the moment, things seem to be okay. But as I say, I need, to, I want to do some more missions out, collect more Arcospheres, get this system fed, and just keep it, keep it running as as smoothly and as neatly as possible. So, yeah, lots to do in this area. To get, I, th I think I also need to probably, again, need more Arcospheres for this, but I think I also need a second copy of this, because if we look down here, we've only got two computers running, and these take 80 seconds to run. And I, liked, I, li I did like to produce one of each type of catalogue every five seconds. Now, I've sort of abandoned that plan with um, Deep Space Science, because it's so much more expensive and so much slower. Um, but that would mean I'd need... In order to get that, I would need 16 computers, um, and that would—and this is barely keeping up with two computers. So we'd need to have eight times the speed of this, uh, eight, eight times this, which means I probably need almost eight times as many arcospheres, and it's just going to get bigger and bigger and more and more unmanageable. So currently, it's it's tricky. Uh, I think it's going to be tr very, it, it's working at this scale, but I think it's going to be very very hard to expand. So we'll see how that goes. I'm also aware, because um, I've done a little bit of research, that there are teleporting chests, what I would potentially call ender chests, except that's a Minecraft thing. Uh, you can make these um, Arcolink storages, and these are basically teleporting chests. So you put two chests in different places, presumably set them up with the same number on them, and anything that's put in one will be available, immediately available in the other one. And that means you can have essentially four inserters dumping stuff, whatever that stuff is, into one chest at one end and four inserters pulling it out at the other end onto belts or uh, or other chests or whatever you want in, or, uh, in, or, in order to transport stuff instantaneously. People have been telling me that this is absolutely great and it's, it's amazing for uh, Naquium processing and stuff like that, but to be honest, the uh, transport isn't, is the logistics is not my problem with Naquium at the moment. The problem with Naquium is in the, in the processing on Tulip, the throughput there with the uh, Vitalic Acid and just producing that fast enough. So transporting the Naquium more quickly from um, Realm of Shadows back to Tulip to be processed actually wouldn't help. So I'm, I, I don't know whether those chests are actually going to be useful or not. The fact that they cost... what was it? Um, they cost uh, 10 Arcospheres to make them and you don't get those back unlike everything else. Um, kind of puts me off. I think I probably won't... I don't think I'll use those. I mean, I might change my mind over this in the future, but at the moment... I'm not really that tempted to use them just because I think having 10 Arcospheres for something else is probably going to be far more valuable. So, yeah, but we'll see. I might change my mind. You never know. I uh, <laughs> I can I can be fickle with it if I want to. So, yes, that's that's Arcospheres, Deep Space Science 3 catalogues. Um, I've gone in and I've put in... 
I've set up a little bit of the programming up here. So we've got the inserters program to unload the Deep Space Science 3 catalogs when that when we've got enough of them made. They can be brought around here. I've, I've programmed in all the sort of the, the different bits and pieces around here to make the science, Deep Space Science Pack 3s. However, this also requires Naquium Tesseracts, which I've not started making yet. Naquium Tesseracts are... Um, Ludicrously expensive. They're they're another one. Of, oh yes, they're another one of the things that do Arcosphere churn. But as you'll see, that takes in three and gives gives out three. So you do get back whatever you put in there. It's it doesn't actually eat anything any of the Arcospheres up. It just borrows them and churns them a bit. So it's another thing that's going to require me to have a few more Arcospheres available in order to keep the churn happy. But more more alarmingly, it requires an enormous quantities of Naquium as well. So that's. A, uh, that's a, a, a concern. I think the next um, episode is going to be all about making more Naquium. <coughs> so, yes, that's Ar that's Arcospheres, that's Arcosphere Folding, Deep Space Science 3, and, yeah, it's, it's working. I'm, I'm kind of okay with it. <laughs> kind of. So, now on to slightly more mundane and weird, less weird things. I noticed that my rocket system down on Norvis was, was struggling. Or rather, no, I, I, that's not quite true. I noticed that my um, resources up in Norvis orbit <coughs> were struggling. There were lots of empty um, empty landing pads and eventually even empty chests. We ran out of, completely ran out of stone. And that's not supposed to happen because over here we've got, we've got a, a big warehouse full of stone. Great. And then we've got a landing pad here that has some stone in it. And whenever more stone is generated by, uh, and when, sorry, whenever this is empty, it automatically requests another rocket to come up and bring it more stone, so that it can carry on. It can carry on keeping this warehouse full, which can keep the train satisfied. So it turned out we weren't getting any rockets. The rockets were not coming up here with with the stone to keep this supplied. So as you do in Factorio, I, tra I traced it backwards, traced it backwards, traced it backwards, and it turned out that the stone rocket, uh, wherever it is, here it is, was just sitting there and not launching, and it was because it didn't have enough fu it didn't have enough fuel to launch, and that was because down here, <coughs> I've started launching a lot more rockets recently, probably because I'm making all of those modules and we're ripping through massive quantities of green circuits and other things as well, so the rockets were flying a bit more regularly, and this rocket fuel production system down here just couldn't keep up with the demand so what I've done in order to fix that is add in an additional spaceship route so down here this spaceship this is an, a, a direct complete perfect spot-on copy of the spaceships that are taking rocket fuel to Norvis orbit however this one flies down lands on Norvis so there were a, f a few changes were made um, obviously I put in the pipes along here and some pumps and things to make sure to, to, to pull the fuel out of here for, keep these tanks nice and full and then this can be pumped up into the into the rockets up here so that has solved the problem <clears throat> the biggest change that needed to be made though is because these ships are leaving from Norvis which is a big planet not from Norvis orbit which is obviously in space they need a lot more fuel to be able to launch so I came in here and I set this this one no this one to launch the ship when uh, the rocket fuel gets under 200,000. So that's enough rocket fuel to launch the spaceship and for it to fly back to Asalia to refuel, um, but it's not quite, it, and it's significantly more than is required on the space spaceships. The other thing I did was I realized that if I've got ships coming in, multiple ships coming in uh, for different places, then I'm going to need to be able to load them a bit more quickly. Um, before I had. <coughs> The ships had this one pipe coming in here to this t to this pump, which would then pump the fuel into here, which would then trickle into here, which would then into here, into here, and just then trickle out into the rest of the ship. That was terrible. I mean, it was it was a poor design. It filled up meant the ship filled up incredibly slowly. Um, I should be ashamed of myself. <clears throat> So what I've done is I've extended the size of the spaceship. Oh, I should probably mention it was a terrible design, but it was okay when there was a, when the fuel was only being taken to one place and there wasn't going to be a queue of ships waiting to fuel up. So what I've done is I've made the ships one extra square wider, which has spoiled the symmetry a little bit, but I don't care. Um, symmetry is entirely just there for cosmetic reasons. And that has meant I've been able to put in these extra four pipes on here that feed directly into these tanks. And now if we have a look on Asalia, We've got matching pumps all the way along the side here. Uh, so we've got, all, we've got the five different filling points that will allow the ship to be filled up significantly more quickly. So this now works much better. The ship can land here. It can fill up in a fraction of the time it did before. And also, and conveniently, this 
rocket fuel producing system that I set up before, I overspec'd it enough when I built it, uh, fairly deliberately. I decided I wanted to I wanted to make sure it was quite future proofed. This system is is sufficient, it seems, to keep all of these tanks full. You'll notice that these ones up here are all uh, are all completely are all basically full, which means there's enough to fill a, a ship up if it lands here. And these ones that buffer into it are also they're not as full, but they're they're doing pretty well. I still don't really I don't really like this system that's pulling across here. I think what I should probably do is have an additional pipe come from here, go across and into here, um, and fill that and fill it up, fill these tanks up from multiple places. Maybe I have one come from down here as well that goes up into this tank. Um, but this hasn't been a problem yet. There's enough fuel in here to fill up a ship when it comes in and lands. We also have the oil ship coming across here. That's completely separate. That's yeah, pulling in oil out of these tanks. This has a decent number of pipes filling the tanks up, and it's being filled from both sides. So this one does fill up fairly quickly, actually. You can see the even the ones in the middle are more than half full, and this ship has only just arrived. So this system pretty good, is pretty good. I'm, I'm 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 happy with this one. And so yeah, I could potentially put in more pumps on the other side, but the ships we've got. These ones, they load up from the right and they unload on the left. Now, yeah, I could extend this again, but that would cause problems with the landing landing clamps. And I could put extra pipes for loading in on this side, but I don't think it's necessary. I think the five it's got pushing in on the other on this side is sufficient. So, yeah, it's working. It is working well. We are we are we we don't have problems with rocket fuel at the moment. This this has just completely solved them. Bringing in the supply from elsewhere is great. It also reduces the amount of demand on the um, on the oil oil supply that's available on Norvis, which means that more of it can go off and be made into plastic or water sulfuric acid or whatever else it's needed for. So there's a big advantage there in um, in having the, the the fuel coming in from somewhere else. While I was down on Norvis sorting all of this out, I fixed one of the things that's been bugging me for a little while. So this uh, this outpost up here, this one seems to be the one that's getting most of the attacks for some reason. I'm not really 100% sure why, but it does. As you can see, there's a little pyre of uh, biters over here. Another pile of corpses there. Um, and so this one had actually run out of, um, of of construction bots to do the repair work because they'd been attacked by the biters enough that they'd all just blown up. Um, so I needed to bring more out here. And I didn't want to just come out and drop drop out, drop some off by hand because then the same problem would happen again later. So what I've done is I've added on to my to my, uh, con my um, outpost train, I've added an additional resource that it carries, which is construction bots. And they can then be unloaded into here. When it, so I've got this monitoring whenever there's... Uh, no, this... This one, yeah. Whenever there's fewer than 20 bots in the in the network, this is the train will unload into here. And that's actually just unloading. Okay, it's trying to unload an entire stack into here. So there should be 50 in here, but the train hasn't been out again since it unloaded and then dumped most of them into here. Um, so, yeah, in, 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 there will generally be a decent number of bots in here. Um, and, it, and, and the train will keep them loaded. It's just occurred to me that I haven't set a monitor the number of bots as well on here. However, you'd kind of hope that if if the um, if the basic if the outpost is getting attacked enough that it's losing bots, it's also going to be getting through other resources as well. So that's probably not necessary. That said, I should link it in and 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 put it in there as well, just for the sake of completeness. And in order to make that work, I also had to put in down here where the outpost train fills up. I put in an, in, an additional chest that requests that requests bots from the uh, logistics network, and we'll put them into the train when it pulls in here. The final step of that, actually, was to come over here and modify this carriage here so that it has a slot that can be filled up with construction bots. So, yeah, the tra that, that, and that has completed everything. And now the train's just sitting here because there aren't any outposts that need it at the moment. I have so far only done that for the one outpost. Um, the rest of them haven't been picking up the same level of attacks. I probably should do it for all of them, again, for the sake of completeness and just keeping things working. But I don't really want to sort of just spend all that time wandering around on, on uh, Norvis just setting these things up. This is probably the ideal use for a Spidertron. I should probably send one of my Spidertrons over here in a spaceship and just get, have that walking around between them and just get it to build up the little extra bits that are required, which is just two inserters, a chest and a roboport. It's fairly straightforward, and just get everything set up and built so that it uh, it starts to work nicely, and 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 and, and we'll we'll keep all the other outposts running. However, it hasn't been a problem yet, and therefore I haven't worked on it because I'm not very good at actually forward thinking with these sort of things. <laughs> so, right, you might also remember from a previous episode, I talked about how many um, 
modules I've been making. So the the, uh, the modules are great. They they um they allow everything to run much much faster and more effectively. The problem is they eat enormous quantities of blue circuits. So I just don't have enough of them. And I went out to Henkes Eswe on a sort of a bit of a fact-finding mission to see what the problem was. I had a look out there. And it turned out, basically, we're just not making them fast enough. We had this system here making them, which takes in takes in copper and stone and and plastic and acid and what it hold me and whatever else. Pretty it produces blue circuits at a at a trickle, as you can see, they're coming out here at, at, at a rate. Um, this is already using the more efficient recipe uh, that uses the Holmium cables and half as many green and red circuits. So we've, I've done what I can there to make that a bit more efficient. Um, but it's still, it's only producing this many blue circuits. So I thought, well, this is Factorio. If you want more of something, you come in here, you copy that, and you paste in another copy of it. So there we go. I've got now got twice as many, twice, the whole thing doubled, o doubled up. Um, there was quite a lot of some fairly horrific spaghetti involved in getting all of the resources through this gap here, as you can see. But it has led to this system now. We are now producing twice as many blue circuits as we were. And this rocket is very nearly full, actually. So this will be blasting off, probably almost certainly going to um, Norvis Orbit, because I think that's the only place this one goes to. Um, and dropping those off and we'll be able to start making some more modules and I'm sure that's going to help quite a bit and we'll have we'll have some more resources and it'll be it'll all be great and happy and hunky dory and so on um it's still not really fast enough as you saw by the fact that the other end had complete had completely run out of um, blue circuits but i think putting in any more is going to be it's going to be a bit tricky let's put it that way um it's going to be a bit of a struggle to get any extra in there. I also noticed we've run out of copper ore. That's There's a train coming, but that's still slightly problematic. Um, let's have a look at the copper mine. Have we run out because the system is incapable of keeping up with it? Or because we need... Oh, no, no, we've got a full... We've got a full mine down here. Okay, so it's just that it's pulling it through at quite a rate. So I think what we need to do is go in here... And implement some of the lessons we've learned from um, we've learned from my tutorial videos. So if we go in here, we'll have, if we have a look at this chest, I bet this is wrong because I didn't really learn how to use LTN properly until I came in and started doing um, until I started doing and, until I did the videos for it. I just sort of half-assed it a bit. So we've got um, one, two, three, four wagons. Stack size is a hundred for copper ore, I think. No, fifty for copper ore. Okay. So let's see, it's it's the stack size, which is 50, times the number of wagons, that's 4, so 200, um, times 40, which is 808,000, times 2. So actually, that's already set to the right sort of level. This should, almost, this should already be requesting an additional train, because we're still on minus 14,000, and we're getting in like 8,000 at a time. So, yeah, as soon as that... There should be another train being requested immediately. But there isn't. Uh, but what about if I... Request threshold of 8,000. Provide, that's fine. I don't know why that hasn't just demanded another one immediately. No station providing copper ore. I mean, that's not... So it's trying to, but it's not a... No station providing copper, but there's a copper... Station down here that's completely full... And not actually wired up to the... Oh, for goodness sake, Lawrence. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's link that to there. There we go. Um, now, so that means there must be another copper mine around somewhere. Here it is. Yes. And this one is struggling. To this one is struggling to keep up with the, with the extra demand. Right. Okay. So, this answers all of, all of my questions. So, there was, there, there was this mine here, which was running okay. And when we were using less copper, it was able to keep up. But now, there's only 7.8 thousand in here. So... It's not ready for another train yet. This mine is going to be able to keep it going for a while. But perhaps I should consider putting in another copper mine. I should run a train out to up here. Uh, pick up some of these. And maybe I should check I should check the oil mine as well while I'm at it. Uh, these are pumping hard. Yeah, these are running a bit low. So, uh, ah, <laughs> yes, I came in and dropped in. I remember I came in and dropped this in because this was running too slowly. And I was saying, yeah, in the future, I'll probably come off up here and get the get this oil patch up here because it's massive. And maybe this one as well. And this one. So I think, yes, that's another. I'm going to have to do a major Henkes Eswe expansion where I'll pick up certainly these two mines because they're massive. These two copper patches because they're massive. And these oil patches up here as well. And just have some long distance trains running. Okay, right. So that's that's something something to put on the old to-do list. Um 
come out here and we'll, we'll build all of that up in a, in, in a future episode so that's that's something that needs to be done just to keep the blue circuits flowing oh there, there we go there's a train trains come out there already so it'll be bringing the um bring the copper up here so it can be <laughs> unloaded and yeah as you can see it's already practically run out if i say practically run out it already has run out it's not gonna by the time the by the time the train gets there there's going to be a shortage up here probably so that's that's a shame but i think i fixed that problem just need to um come out and fix it properly for the future so that's that's pretty much everything i have for you if we look on tulip again we, we can see that the problem with the um with, with the with the uh the naquium is essentially in how quickly we can process this and the limiting factor is still this vitalic acid that's coming in so i need to build more more processing in order to get more vitalic acid to come through and i'm gonna have to have a good think about how i'm going to do that because a lot of this system or a lot of this machinery down here is already running flat out so i might need to just put in an entire additional um vita melange processing facility um or perhaps consider coming through and putting in better modules in here. I mean, that is a thing I can start doing now. Yeah, we shall we shall see. I I need to have a look at this at some point because the the um the vitalic acid is the limiting factor for the um for the naquium, and the naquium is the limiting factor for all of deep space science. So oh, there goes the spaceship, and there's another spaceship with with some more uh, naquium to, crash naquium to unload. Uh, yeah. So there's some work is work is definitely required on this but that's going to be something to happen in the next episode so yes next episode well that'll be coming out uh, next week of course i'll be doing the stream on wednesday so uh, come along to that if you want to actually see me uh, see me playing see me solving some of these problems in real time or come along on next next sunday for the for the next episode and please subscribe to the channel i'm uh, trying to boost my numbers up at the moment i've got this big target of getting to a thousand subscribers which doesn't sound like very many based on compared to some of the big channels out there but it's 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 a big milestone a big goal for me so i'd like to get there so if you can help me with that if you're if you're watching the video and not subscribed please do please do subscribe it'll help you it'll tell you when the next one comes out and when i'm up to other stuff as well so yeah please come along to that and i'm sure i hope and hopefully it'll be uh it'll all it'll carry on being interesting now we've got the monday night streams as well that's where we're playing um Factory, no, no, we're playing Minecraft Dungeons, Dragons, and Space Shuttles. We're getting onto quite a lot of automation with that now, so it's a lot of the sort of things that you enjoy with Factorio is now starting to happen in Minecraft as well. So yeah, I recommend coming along and seeing that. We've got some computer systems up and working. I've I've automated some of the blood production and various other sort of dark magic things going on, as well as technological things. There's a good a good balance of different different things going on in there. So there's the stream on Mondays and the videos for those on Saturdays, and we're starting to get, I'm starting to produce GTA videos again now. So I've got a little bit more time in my life because um, they are they're a little bit more um, edit heavy so those are coming out every Thursday and I'm going to try and start producing various tutorials and things on Fridays as well so there's lots going on on the channel lots to see lots to watch and you can carry on watching me beating my head against the whole Arcosphere problem as well so there's yeah lots and lots of interesting things please come along lots to see lots to do lots to watch make sure you're subscribed and, and liking the videos and all that sort of thing and subscribed on Twitch oh sorry no following on Twitch and subscribed as well if you're feeling generous I think that'd be nice um and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you then.